Hi, and welcome to Physics Fundamentals. I'm your host, Angie, and today we're talking about superconductors and magnetic levitation. Superconductors are materials where electricity flow with absolutely zero resistance. In 1911, superconductivity was observed in mercury by Dutch physicist Heinrich Kermlich Ohms when he cooled it to the temperatures of liquid helium and its resistance disappeared. Helium liquefies at 4 degrees Kelvin, or minus 452 degrees Fahrenheit. Ohms won a Nobel Prize in Physics for his discovery in this area. German researchers Walter Meisner and Robert Oxenfeld discovered that a superconducting material will repel a magnetic field. The phenomenon is known as Meisner effect. Meisner effect is so strong that a magnet can actually be levitated over a superconductive material. Theoretical understanding of superconductivity was advanced in 1957 by American physicists John Bardeen, Leon Cooper, and John Robert Schrieffer. Their theory of superconductivity became known as the BCS theory, derived from the first letter of each man's last name, and this won them a Nobel Prize in 1972. On March 18, 1987, at the American Physical Society, physicists gathered for a marathon session of 51 presentations on high temperature superconductors. Talks started at 7.30 p.m. and went until around 3 a.m. Because of this, it was called by many the Woodstock of Physics in reference to the 1969 Woodstock Music and Art Festival. Later that year, George Benoz and Carl Alexander Müller were awarded the 1987 Nobel Prize in Physics for their breakthrough discovery of superconductivity in ceramic materials. Now we'll take a question from a student named Zadie. Zadie, what's your question? Hi Angie, my name is Zadie. I am 12 years old and I live in South Africa. I have heard a lot about superconductors lately. How do they work? Also, how do magnets seem to magically float above them? I know someone that can answer your question. His name is Gong Xiao. He's a condensed matter researcher and a lecturer here in the physics department at Brown. He's always excited to share his love of physics with everyone he meets. Gong? Hello, Zeddy. Excellent questions. I'm Professor Xiao, and I'll gladly answer these questions as we embark on an exciting journey into the world of physics. A world where certain metals dare to defy gravity and conduct electricity without any resistance. It might sound like something out of a science fiction story, but in the captivating realm of physics, the most remarkable things often lurk just beneath the surface. Remember, playing with magnets, they have a side that attracts and another that repels. So what if I told you that we could use this magnet to make a metal float above it as if seeing zero gravity? Would you believe me? This is a special track. It is made, of, made up with a, an array of magnets. And here our secret ingredient, the superconductor. A superconductor is a special material that allows electricity to flow through it without any resistance when it is extremely cold, much like how you glide effortlessly on ice. Think of a superconductor is a truly magical material that has special affinity for electricity. You know how we use uh, copper wire to conduct electricity? Well, copper is like a good friend to electricity, but it is still creates some heat and waste a bit of electricity when it flows through the wire. Now, a superconductor is like a superhero friend of electricity. It has an amazing power, zero resistance. This means electricity can flow through it without any obstacles, like a smooth and fast highway just for electricity. Because of this incredible power, we can use superconductor to make our power grid super efficient. It's like upgrading our regular roads to super fast highways 
but for electricity. But that's not all. Superconductors can also do something really cool. They can create super strong magnets. You know how magnets stick to your fridge, right? Well, with a special kind of superconductor, we can make even stronger magnets. And the best part is, we can send a lot of electricity through the superconductor without worrying about it getting damaged or melted. This allows us to create super powerful magnetic field, which is useful for amazing things like the MRI machine in hospitals, helping doctors to see inside our body, like looking at our brains. So you see, superconductors are like magical materials in the world of science, and they help us save energy and do incredible things with electricity and magnets. Oh, here is something uh, fascinating. Currently, all superconductors work best at very cold temperatures. But guess what? Scientists are working really hard to discover a superconductor that can work at room temperature, just like the temperatures around us. If we had a superconductor at room temperature, electricity would be distributed more efficiently and it would help the environment. It would be like finding the ulti ultimate magical materials that could, we can use for so many fantastic things. Isn't the world of science and superconductor just mind-blowing? So keep your eyes open, and who knows, maybe one day you will be part of the team that discovers the next superconductor wonder. And right here, my friends, we have liquid nitrogen, far colder than the chillest w uh, winter day on Earth. But remember, safety comes first. We are using it to cool our superconductor to a frosty minus 321 degrees Fahrenheit. It's extremely important to exercise caution. Never come into contact with liquid nitrogen. And always wear specialized heavy-duty gloves designed to handle ultra-low temperatures. Store liquid nitrogen in cryogenic containers and ensure the room is properly ventilated. Leave handling of the liquid nitrogen to professionals experienced with low temperature. Notice the smoky mist. That's air around a superconductor condensing due to the cold. Here I'm dipping the superconductor into liquid nitrogen. When it's cold enough, our superconductor comes to life. And there you have it, the magic of physics in action. Isn't this fascinating? Our superconducting is floating, not by magic, but by the magnetic levitation thanks to our superconductors. The superconductor can also move around the circular magnetic track almost without friction. But why does it happen? Let's explore further. Here's a very similar magnet, just like the magnetic track. And I'm going to put a superconductor, a cold superconductor, on top of this. And same thing will happen, right? I have the levitation. Now I'm going to flip this around, and let's pay attention to see what happens next. See, the superconductor is suspended in air. It's another form of levitating. Normally, magnetic fields, which are invisible forces created by magnets, can pass through most materials. But superconductors, when they are super cold, they push away these magnetic forces. This incredible phenomenon is called the Meissner effect. It occurs when the superconductor, cooled below its critical temperature, actively repels magnetic fields and their accompanying lines. So instead of allowing the magnetic field lines through a superconductor, a superconductor generates an opposing magnetic field that mirrors the magnet's field like two similar poles, 
these fields repel each other, causing the magnet to levitate. It's a perfect balancing act. Our superconductor is the ultimate acrobat, adjusting its opposing field so that superconductor floats above it. So there you go, magnetic levitation, a super cool phenomenon, no magic needed, just the fascinating physics of superconductor. But you might ask, if a magnet is pushing a superconductor away, why doesn't the superconductor just veer off to the side? Well, that's where the story gets even more intriguing. When a superconductor is moving around the track made of magnets, it might seem like it should veer off the track due to the repulsion between the magnet and the superconductor. However, there's a fascinating phenomenon called flux spinning that keeps the superconductor on track. Inside the superconductor, there are tiny regions called vortices where the magnetic field lines get trapped. And these vortices act like little anchor, keeping the superconductor in place on the track. When the magnets and the superconductor repel each other, the vortices prevent the superconductor from completely floating away or falling off the track. It's like having an invisible rope or guide rail that helps the superconductor stay within the magnetic track. This unique behavior of the superconductor and the vortices working together is what allows the superconductor to guide smoothly along the track without veering off, creating the mesmerizing effect of magnetic levitation. Incredible, isn't it? Physics isn't just about simple pushes and pulls. It's the symphony of tiny forces working together, creating what seems like magic, but it's actually intricate dance of science. Though this may look just like a cool trick, it's more than that. This principle is used in magnetic technology application, such as the magnetic levitation trains that levitate above their tracks, achieving blazing speed. You might be curious, why doesn't the superconductor fall off when placed underneath the magnet? That's another fantastic question. The repulsion and flux pinning aren't just confined to the superconductor just being on top of the magnet. They are also at play around it. In simpler terms, when the superconductor enters a magnetic field, the magnetic field lines get pinned or locked into the tiny whirlpools called vortices. Imagine trying to move the superconductor is attempting to shift these locked vortices. Due to the pinning effect, this actually is quite challenging. Consequently, the superconductor can be suspended beneath a magnet, defying the pull of gravity and maintaining a floating state. This effect isn't restricted to levitating, levitation al alone. You can even lock the superconductor at different angles or orientations relative to the magnet, and it will hold that position until an external force or heating disrupts its superconducting state. So the same forces are at play when the superconductor is beneath the magnet. The superconductor's opposing magnetic field pushes against the, the magnet's field, while the flux pinning keeps it steady in place. This interplay of forces creates an illusion as if our superconductor is adhering to the underside of the magnet, defying gravity itself. As you can see, in the world of physics, even gravity has its surprises. Keep exploring, keep questioning, and who knows what mysteries you might uncover next. By mastering these concepts, we are unlocking the door to the marvel of our universe. And who knows, one day, you might use this knowledge to pioneer something truly revolutionary. Physics is a treasure trove of captivating phenomenon waiting to be discovered. So keep learning, and above all, enjoy every step of the journey. 
until our next exciting journey, Young Einsteins. Thanks, Gong, and thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please email us at physicsfundamentals at gmail.com. Bye for now.